Hey, hey, Marcus House and Mark Thrym with you here and welcome to our collaborative series of the SpaceX ITS Mars colonization mission. If you haven't already viewed part one of this video, check it out here first. In part one hosted on Mark Thrym's channel, we covered the preliminary ship and booster segment of our mission heading to a parking orbit, so check that out. In part two, we are looking at the tanker refueling section of the initial mission to Mars. Now, before I say anything else here, and as I said in part one, Mark Thrym has spent a massive amount of time creating this SpaceX mod for us to use while making this series. And this is very close now to the interplanetary transport system design presented by Elon Musk just a few short weeks ago. The link for this mod I do of course have down in the description if you do want to have a play with the vessel, so enjoy that. In this video, Mark Thrym is in the pilot seat at the controls flying the vessel, while I'm going to try my best to explain the awesome concept of the ITS design throughout this segment of our mission. If anyone isn't familiar with SpaceX's ITS design, there is a link to the original presentational video down in the description, so do check that out, it is just awesome. So in part one, we launched the ship and landed the booster, and of course, as suggested by the official presentation, the booster will refuel back at the launch mount while the tanker stage is added to the top of the freshly landed booster. Of course, the ship from part one is awaiting the tanker in a low earth parking orbit, so there is no time to mess around. The tanker needs to launch quickly to meet up with the ship and refuel it so it can then head off to Mars. So there is a very good reason why the tanker stage is needed to do this refueling step, and although the entire process is a little more complex than the mission to the moon many years ago, there is a very good reason why this refueling method is a terrific idea. Firstly, if the ship and booster were to launch and head to Mars from a single launch without refueling in orbit, it would require a three-stage vehicle at an estimated five to ten times the size and cost. Now, as specified in the presentation material, by spreading the lift capacity across multiple launches, it substantially reduces development costs and lessens the time needed to develop a much larger disposable rocket. Not to mention, of course, that SpaceX is all about reusability, and if you've seen any of the recent Falcon 9 drone ship landings, then you'll know why there is so much excitement around this reusability concept to essentially reduce the cost of space travel by a very large percentage. So, although there are performance losses due to the reusability of the boosters, it is well worth the cost. As said many times by SpaceX, reusability is the key to making human life multi-planetary. And this is the real inspiring end goal, and it will allow humans to transport much, much more cargo to Mars in a much shorter time frame. The tanker itself will be heavier than the ship component simply because it will be almost fully loaded with fuel. Although we can't find a source for this, we very much expect that the tanker's booster stage will reach a slightly lower velocity than the ship stage did before the booster's main engines cut off. This is simply because the tanker itself is proposed to weigh quite a bit more as it's going to be almost fully loaded with fuel. The ship of course will have a lot more empty space for the 100 passengers that are hopefully not going to be packed too tightly into the ship for the long journey to Mars. After the tanker intercepts with the ship, the two vessels will then dock together and the tanker will refuel the ship leaving just enough fuel to return to Earth again fully reusable. The ship itself will have heat shielding on the bottom face of the tanker and ship allowing it to re-enter Earth's atmosphere similar to the retired space shuttle. All the same though, like any re-entry it could very well mean a brown trousers time for those awaiting a signal to indicate the tanker made it through the re-entry without burning up. It is imperative of course that the tanker remains tilted and facing the correct angle to ensure the heat shielding is in the correct placement. Any deviation can cause disaster for the tanker, and as we recently read in SpaceX's subreddit, Elon announced that both the spaceship and the tanker would have split body flaps for pitch and yaw control as well. So as the tanker descends into the lower atmosphere, it will then flip over using these controls and come in tail first. The sea level engines then will wipe off the remaining velocity and then come down to land using three massive landing legs. So now of course our ship in orbit, fueled and ready for its journey, can head off to Mars using only the six vacuum engines. 
This Mars colonization mission will take a select number of very courageous humans on the longest and most dangerous exploration mission in evolutionary history. So we hope you enjoyed part 2 of our Mars colonization mission. Part 3 is on its way and will also be linked to this video. We want to thank you, our subscribers, very much for the support. And if you haven't subscribed to either Mark Thrim's channel or my channel here, and you have enjoyed this content, please do subscribe to see more. And of course, any comments, likes and shares are all very much appreciated. We love you all and we'll see you in part 3.